handle squeezed, aperture fixed, trigger pulled, and target hit. A 14-year-old unarmed schoolgirl shot once in the head and once in the neck, deprived of life for nothing else than daring to attend school. Your Royal Highness, honorable members of the jury, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Evelyn Paris, and I'm standing in front of you to speak about this huge hindrance which stands in the way of the currently utopian goal of our living in a peaceful society. The division of mentalities and the violation of basic human rights. Malala Yousufzi, the girl whose case I've presented at the beginning of my speech, was leaving her school in a van one day when an armed Taliban assailant entered and shot her. The reason? Her being an outspoken proponent of education for girls. A Taliban spokesman declared that Malala was targeted for trying to spread Western culture and that they would try to kill her again if she had survived. Unfortunately, it is not until such unthinkable things happen that people tend to get an awakening. In this case, it took such an atrocity being committed for us to realize that racism, the division of society, the multitude of mentalities, and especially the lack of mutual respect for all these ideas and principles can shake the foundation of a civilization and make it collapse little by little. Equality, independence, democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of choice, human security, human rights. All these ideas are wonderful in the <coughs> ideal, but very few ever achieve the full utopian state of implementation. Winston Churchill once said, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. However, what is there to be done when the most powerful weapon against any kind of social injustice, the vestige of the Vox Populi, now vacant, vanished, only lives in the hearts and minds of few of us? Society, which is believed to be the ultimate reflection of ourselves, is maintained in a constant state of chaos and disorder. And it is clear that things have gone terribly wrong if adepts of certain political ideologies strongly believe that it is completely justified to silence to death an unarmed schoolgirl. An ensemble vision of education to society regards it as immensely beneficial. And anything from culture, military power, economic power, stability, and technology is advanced by having a competent, educated population. However, the more aware people are of the laws and their rights, the less likely are they to accept the constraints of tyranny. And this is what women are still being prevented from in certain parts of the world. It is widely accepted that the more complex a piece of machinery, the more likely is it that one of the parts is going to break down. And once the part breaks down, the problems extend to other areas. And before we know, the entire machine has broken down. This is the problem of complexity. Thus, this is the problem of the world. The world is divided into 195 different countries, 4,200 different religions, and 6,500 different languages. Those differences on their own are source of conflict. Add into equation things like population pressure, competition for scarce resources, different social economical backgrounds, and different political landscapes, and the result is a volatile mess that doesn't require much to break one of the parts. Josh Rendon once said, equality is not a concept. It's something we should be striving for. It's a necessity. But what is our part in the struggle to achieve equality? Well, we have to stand upright on our feet and bring a contribution no matter how small, because we may be part of the problem, but we are also part of the solution. Attitude is a small thing that can make a huge difference. Your attitude may only represent a single drop in the ocean, but what is rain but millions of drops? 
Always remember that, as Martin Luther King once said, our lives begin to end the very moment we become silent about the things that matter. So this is our time to step forward and make our voices heard. Thank you for your attention. Do you consider that the fact that there are 6,000 languages on this world is a greater source of conflict than the fact that there are 200 countries? Uh, first of all, I believe that all those differences are source of conflict on their own. Uh, I wouldn't say that the fact that there are more languages is a bigger problem that, than the fact that there are uh, so many countries. But at the same time, they create different conflicts. For instance, uh, different languages, um, sometimes make it impossible for us to transmit a message and to understand each other. Uh, I wouldn't say that if we were one united country, it wouldn't be, uh, there wouldn't be conflicts, because we all come from different parts of the globe, and the world has evolved in different ways. So I think that those, I wouldn't call them problems, but I think that they are thi those are things that equally spark conflict. Thank you. Uh, you said that these differences are the cause of our problems, but uh, would you rather choose globalization at the price of, let's say, cultural identity? I personally believe that globalization wouldn't be actually a solution, but I think that through globalization we can encourage people to accept the cultural differences. And uh, I believe that we should be careful in order to uh, maintain our um, regional identity, our national identity, and we should preserve our heritage. But at the same time, we should accept the cultural differences that we have, um, and uh, we should respect them as we respect our own ideals and principles. Do you think that the assassination of Martin Luther King led to the, to the black community to unite or to disunite? I think that his aim was actually to unite because uh, he wanted the black community to um, escape and he wanted at the same time equal rights for the black and whites because they had separate schools, they had separate playgrounds and so on and so forth and what he was striving for was equality. So he was striving for equal uh, and united America.